A very good evening to you this post-democracy day Sunday. I'm Naja Atatajani with the news on Nationwide. Thanks for joining us. The Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ngigi, has appealed to those behind various forms of propaganda against the Bahari administration to desist from such in the interest of national peace and security. Addressing leaders of Igbo residents from the 19 northern states and the federal capital territory in Abuja, the minister said such acts are, prov are provoking threats to peace and misleading the people. Salihu Abdullahi Wanara reports. 69-year-old Eze Boniface Ibekwe is an Igbo trader from southeast Nigeria, residing in Kano, northwest Nigeria, for more than 40 years. He's a member of the Kano State Traditional Council and in the payroll of the state government for decades. We cannot live in isolation. Nigeria is a great country. And all of us, we benefit from Nigeria more better than separation. Eze Boniface and other Eze Ndibos drum from across the country are concerned about Nigeria's unity and security. Who are you separating with? The Hausa man, the Yoruba man, the Igbo man, the Gala man, the Gwari man, the same God that brought us together and has a reason, a purpose for bringing us together. The Igbos of Nigeria and Nigerians were indigenous to Nigeria. We will not support the breakup of Nigeria. We will not work for the breakup of Nigeria. The Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, said there are two types of leaders in a democratic society, but President Muhammad Buhari represents the non-partisan, non-religious, and non-tribal politician in Nigeria. So, Infrastructure-wise, we have gotten our fair share. There is no mattress man there. We are there in the Federal Executive Council. And the Federal Executive Council is composed of ministers who are per state. President Buhari gave us six. One extra. But much more importantly, the propaganda against this government by the elites in the South is, should stop. The meeting hoped to calm nerves and send a strong message of peace and harmonious relationship so that the likes of Eze Boniface and Eze Obonna will continue to pursue and sustain their means of livelihoods in peace in Kano and Meduguri in Abuja. Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara, NTA News. Similarly, for Nigeria's democracy to thrive, Nigerians must work towards putting an end to the challenges of insecurity, poverty and corruption. This is the submission of the guest lecturer Femi Aburushade at the 2021 Democracy Day celebration in Ondo State with the theme Democracy and Insecurity, Challenges and the Way Forward. Abiola Ario reports. The guest lecturer, who is a labor activist and human rights lawyer, submitted that neither secession nor restructuring is the ultimate solution to the problems of poverty and insecurity in Nigeria, but paradigm shifts in the philosophy of governance. The solution to insecurity and the challenges confronting Nigeria's democracy lies in drawing the appropriate lessons of 212. And what is that appropriate? For Ondo State Governor, Oluwari Timiakredolu, government at all levels must reflect on the principles of good governance and put it into practice. As people look forward to better Nigeria, all of us, we are every citizen will be proud. We are all looking forward to where all of us will be proud. Hope and in that, no doubt, we must try to rekindle the light of realistic expectation since 1999. Through their cultural display, the state cultural troupe stressed the need for unity and peace in Nigeria. Since they have decided to join the union, let us now come together, work together as a free and prove as one strong force and match all our ways with action. When we do this, now return into our land. In Akure, Abiola Rio, 
NTA News. Thank you, Abiola. And with me in the studio to talk more about Nigeria's democratic journey is the Director General of the Voice of Nigeria and the Chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Mr. Osita Okechuku. You're welcome to our studio. Good evening. Thank you. Now, it's been 22 years of Nigeria's democracy. What would you say? How would you rate it? We, in the past 22 years, when we entered the Fourth Republic, in 1999, we've done tremendously well. A, le a lot of people forget that this smartphone we have today, <laughs> the GSM, mm -hmm. is an outcome of the democracy we have. Before that, what we had was uh, 090, that we are in the few hands of the few elites. But today, the lady that said granite in my village communicates with me here. The, the truck driver, the Okada rider, they all communicate. Nobody takes it as an achievement anymore because it has become part of our life. So in all the four classified infrastructure, we've done so well. We've done so well in fiscal infrastructure. We have more roads today. Uh, Mr. Mr. President has added the standard gauge railway that never existed before from across north-south, the latest he launched recently is the Ibado to Lagos. These are achievements of democracy. It's going to get up to Maradi. The east-west road, I talked to the Minister of uh, 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 Transportation, Honorable Chibika Mech, and he told me that east-west road is going to take track. Both the narrow gauge is going to be rehabilitated, and there will be also a standard gauge drawn from Porakot Crossing about 80 states to Menugri. These are achievements happening under democracy on fiscal side. On the social infrastructure, I've asked them how many universities were there in Nigeria in 1999. Some people told me about 76. Today it's over 200, both federal owned, state owned, and private sector owned. They will refer to you about Nigerians that have achieved a lot in America and in the UK. Most of them are products of the system there that trump them up. A lot of people easily forget that you are doing well as a doctor in the US. You forgot that you went to University College in Bado. You went to UNTH in, in Enugu, or you went to Amadi Bello Teaching Hospital. When you get that first degree, and you, you get to the US or the UK, and you prosper, they will say, no, 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 they will forget us. So we've done so well. Where do we go? Yes, I agree that there are challenges, like the fourth infrastructure, which is security. There are challenges there. But I know we will overcome. Because over the years, we depended on mono economy, where we depended on oil, oil revenue. But in the past six years, President Mohamed Buhari had introduced what I call the Buhari Agrarian Revolution. Whereby I told the youths and women, please, everybody cannot keep up on only the white collar job. Let's get back to our villages. We are the states. We help you to clear the farmland, supply you high yielding crops, help you in livestock. Collectively, it's driving at building agro industrial rural development. And Mr. President has gone out of his way to make an arrangement where all manner of agricultural implements will be shipped into the country, established in over 700 centers with agro-processing plants in what they, they call the Green Imperative Program, where he's borrowing 995 million euro, equivalent of about $1.2 million. These are projects that is Mr. President is telling you that that oil is in a state of decline. That in the few decades ahead, the ordinary car you ride there might not be fueled by petrol or PMS, that it will be electrical. So in trying to look at that feature, he's saying, yes, we're a blessed country, endowed on all corners of the earth. We are among the 10 most populous countries of the world. We are seven today, and the projection is that we, shall, we are getting to third or fourth.
because we deliver 20,000 children on a daily basis in Nigeria. If you do that, what are your chances? Your chances is one, you improve on infrastructure so that people could do the best they could. You also get back to land. That's what the democracy are brought to bear. So let me cut you there. Please. You've talked about so many advancements with me, we've made, especially in terms of the digital economy and also in the agricultural sector. Now, Nigeria is regarded as the largest economy in Africa. And despite the pandemic affecting the country so far, how has this administration been able to maintain this rating in light of recent developments? A lot of people forgot that before the COVID of 2020, Mr. President closed the borders, banned the importation of rice, one of the stable food of the country. How was it managed? It's because he invested. Post-1970 Nigeria, Mr. President invested more in agriculture than any regime that passed the shores post-1970 Nigeria. And that was what cushion. So when the COVID came, uh, people forgot that in 2020, there were three good months that the world was locked down and oil did not sell. In fact, what they were paying for was demorage. What contained us? It could have been worse. Yes, today the price of food is very high. It's very high, but it could have been worse if we are not going back. That's what Mr. President was saying in his speech that those who cause insecurity, please, should help the country so that farmers can get back to land. So one of our greatest benchmark is agriculture. The other one is also the entertainment industry. Don't forget in Hollywood. When you hear the David O and others, a lot of people do not credit it to the regime. Why was it there? Because Nigeria has improved on freedom infrastructure whereby you can even dance the way you want, you do it the way you want, because those are what freedom are brought to bear. And I, as you said, the digital economy remains one of the backbones of the youth, because it, re it requires your own intellectual ability to think beyond the box. That uh, by thinking, a lot of Nigerians have discovered very serious applications there's one they demonstrated to us the other day, they called the Rated Artisans, that is compiling the list of all artisans across the board of the country. That if you are in that application today, you need a plumber. You go through the application, a plumber is in your doorstep. You need a carpenter, you go through the application, it's in your doorstep. These are the innovations of the Nigerian youths. So in a nutshell, you're saying this administration has been one of inclusiveness, where everyone from the grassroots to the top have had their say and are also being represented in one way or the other. At this point, sir, I'd like to, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut you. Yeah, but don't forget the, the gas, the yeah. Nigerian gas expansion program yes. that's going to bring small, small industries along the line of gas infrastructure. So it's not going to be only oil. It's going to be farm, it's going to be gas, it's going to be IT, it's going to be entertainment. Thank you, Thank very, you very much, much for the opportunity. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now I've been talking to the DG of Von that's and the person of Osita Okechuku, who's been talking about six years of the Buhari administration in light of democracy and, of course, with projections for a better future. Now the need for a change of mindset hard work and determination by Nigerian youth has been stressed at the unveiling of a Nigeria project twin of the Nigeria project rather 2031 by quote our Nigeria destiny citizens conference the project is to ensure that by 2031 Nigeria will be the most humane friendly destination on earth have we ever lived abroad being an expert in a foreign country can challenge One can feel isolated and lonely. Sometimes friends one has are only people from one's home country. For many travelers, the warmth of the welcome they receive in a foreign country can make their trip fulfilling or depressing. Truth is, no one wants to travel half the world only to be greeted with hostility. It is in the light of this that our National Destiny Citizen Conference wants to ensure that 
By 2031, Nigeria is the most humane and friendly destination on Earth. Under the Project Nigeria 2031, over 10 million Nigerian youths will be enlisted as national destiny ambassadors and also trained in small and medium enterprise. Enough of murmuring and complaining. Everything people are complaining about is, the, is what we see, is the reality, but it's not the truth. Now we want to bring out the truth. Your truth is in your belief. What you believe becomes your truth, and that's what we want to achieve through this project. Unveiling of the projects, partners in this 10-year project believe that with the change in mindset, Nigerian youths can change the narrative and the country can be what we all want it to be. That they will now have the kind of mindset, the trainings and, and, and mentorship and coaching that is required for the change that we're looking for. And when they begin to collectively and collaboratively uh, leave that, you know, then we will get the kind of uh, support. Every change should start with the mind. Once you change your mind to the positive mind, you change your mind to the right direction, everything falls into place. So I'm bringing that knowledge of how to change your mind to the positive mind, to bring to pass what you want to see in your life. Everybody at every level should contribute our quota to see the Niger of our dreams come to reality. So I, I believe it's very positive and I want to believe it's one of the sparks and vehicles um, to bring us to where we dream Niger to be in years to come. The training with three models will commence in the next two weeks and will last for three months. Haman Jabani, ETA News. And we look forward to that. Now, stakeholders of the All Progressives Congress have reaffirmed their commitment to embracing the party as an institution and a platform to entrench and propagate democracy in Nigeria. And this was during the public presentation of a book titled APC's Litmus Test, Nigeria's Democracy and Politics of Change. Within the 22 years of Nigeria's democratic journey, the All Progressives Congress is eight years old, but some of its actors are as old as the country's independence. As a political party with a blend of the old and young, and having been in government at the center for six years, from May 29, 2015 to date, the 250-page book chronicled the history of APC. Chieftains of the party have provided tips on what should be the focus of the APC's litmus test. Leaders who are elected under the uh, banner of the party will continue to remain accountable to the lowest level of the party. We are in charge for you, a progressive government, a progressive regime, and I think it is proper that we show to the nation that when the people want some degree of change, we should be responsible to it. We run a bipartisan Senate. We live in harmony with the opposition. We ensure that whatever the executive is bringing or doing is in tune with the law. The litmus test for me, whatever our party has gone through in the last six years, or eight years, as it were, we are still facing a lot of challenges. It is a book that can serve to generate the necessary intellectual discourse and pathway for the APC to fully define itself in terms of its policies, internal governance, and most importantly, its identity. The author said promoting intra-party peace stimulated his intellect. For me, one of the big challenges is that politics must not be reduced to the person of election. And the line issue about democracy is political party. What kind of parties do we have? And that is where APC is different. It was agreed that APC is only a political party providing the leadership, but the collective contributions of all citizens is what is required to promote peace, unity, and development. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi Gwarara, NTA News. Meanwhile, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has arrested an Uber driver with cocaine at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos. A statement signed by the in a statement signed by the director, 
media and publicity of the agency, Femi Baba Femi. The suspect was arrested with 150 grams of cocaine concealed inside two pieces of air freshener at the Skyway Aviation Handling Company, SACO Export Shed of Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, on Tuesday, 8th June 2021, when he brought the consignment from his client for export to Malabo in Equatorial Guinea. In another related development, another male suspect was arrested on Friday, 11th June 2021 on Qatar Airlines from Gru in Brazil at the de-arrival hall of Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, with nine wraps of cocaine weighing about 300 grams in his undergarments. Other suspects are two drug peddlers with cocaine and 3.03 kilograms of cannabis sativa. It's time now to join Adiola in our Lagos studios for more on activities at the airport. Hello, Adiola. Hello, Najatu. Nigerians have put behind them the June 12 celebration to return to business as commercial activities are gradually picking up. I was in town earlier and here is what I saw. The announcement that there was going to be a protest for Democracy Day June 12 nationwide caused a lot of panic in Nigerians and many people refused to come out of their houses that fateful day. While police tried to dispel where there were um, youths trying to form a protest by using tear gas to dispel them, others quietly stayed at home. But this day being Sunday, the 13th of June 2021, everywhere is peaceful and calm. Lagos, a city that was almost a shadow of herself during the celebration of this year's Democracy Day Saturday due to the apprehension of planned violent protest, is gradually returning to its usual hustle and bustle. Although Sundays usually record light traffic with few business activities carried out, that narrative seems a bit different as the Ojota bus terminal, markets and few business outlets were seen transacting businesses. There was no business at all. The business still was so bad. Like me, I came, I had been, I had been in Lagos since day for city and I, I was going back and said I could not. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm just loading now. To where? To so address it. Yes, so, how is the business right now today? And what's the situation? The, at the business park now, the situation at the park now, and the business now is as calm as normal. Today being Sunday is always like this, so it's slow but steady. People are full of fear. People are afraid. That's why they they were unable to come out early in the morning. Motoring along the Lekki Axis and the Toll Plaza was hitch free while virtually all business centers along the corridor still remain locked. Meanwhile, security operatives were spotted in the areas visited. Now, as the country celebrates 22 years of uninterrupted democratic governance, Governor Baba Jide Sonwolu has charged political office holders to leverage on the ideals of June 12th struggle to ensure citizens enjoy endless dividends of democracy. He gave the charge while fielding questions from State House correspondents on June 12th and Democracy Day in Lagos. Musa Toliet reports. Governor Babajide Sonwolu said political office holders must reflect on the ideals of democracy, which makes it imperative for them to put the people first. He stressed that the nation's democracy can be better strengthened when the rule of law is guaranteed and practiced to the letter. We're going through you know, a constitutional reform. Let that reform, let that changes, let that amendment that will be coming out, let it be true representation and reflection of what an ordinary citizen wants what a real Nigerian on the street, what they are agitating for, what they want us that are in position of leadership, what they want us to be doing. Sonwulu, however, lauded the selflessness and ultimate sacrifice paid by the presumed winner of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, MK Abiola, to ensure that democracy is birthed in Nigeria. It's the day that indeed we remember the late MK Abiola, you know, stood for, that he fought for, you know, but it's also a day to remember you know, as 
a day where our democracy was challenged, but we've all been able to come together and realize that there's nothing, there's no alternative to democracy. There's no alternative to democracy where indeed can, there can be freedom of expression, freedom of choice, freedom of movement of our people, and people can indeed express themselves to determine who their real leaders you know, should be at every point in time. The governor urged public office holders to stay true to their oath of office with a view to delivering dividends of democracy to the citizens of the country. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. And that's it from here. We shall take our first break on Nationwide. The news will continue thereafter. Please stay with us. My name is Boss Mustafa, uh, the Secretary to the Government and the Chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. I've just had the rare privilege of uh, taking my first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. And I can tell you that we are doing very well in terms of uh, our response and the administration of the vaccines uh, all over the country. As strategic leaders, we are supposed to lead by example. And the president did precisely that on Saturday with the vice president. And we are continuing in that uh, particular direction. The essence of taking these vaccines is to help us really uh, fight this COVID-19 virus and the combination of the non-pharmaceutical measures and the vaccine is the way to go in 2021 and thereafter. The president has made a clarion call no one can do it better than ourselves. We are Nigerians. Let's together share our rich products, cultural heritage, and great talents with the rest of the world. We are Nigerians. Relevant stakeholders are joining the campaign, calling on fellow compatriots to come on board. Be part of Made in Nigeria Expo, coming on the 15th and 19th of June, 2021, at the Eagle Square, Abuja. Made in Nigeria Expo is brought to you by the Interministerial Committee on Nigeria at 60 Expo, in collaboration with Business Visa and Trainings Company Limited. Revision classes on television for students in secondary schools in English and Mathematics will commence on the NTA. The revision classes will transmit Mondays to Fridays from 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on the network service of the NTA. This is organized in preparation for the various national examinations and orders. This is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Education. Just joining us, this is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. President Muhammad Buhari warmly felicitates with former head of state General Abdusalami Abu Bakr on his 79th birthday, joining family members and friends to celebrate the iconic leader whose legacy of setting the country on the path of democracy and good governance and passionate pursuit of peace continues to yield results. President Buhari congratulates General Abu Bakr for another age, appreciating his patriotism and visionary leadership, always advocating unity, projecting maturity and wisdom on national discourse, and also providing a rallying point for the future of the country. The president notes the goodwill which the former head of state continues to attract to the country, both at national and international levels, particularly sacrificing his time and resources to reach out to individuals and institutions on the need to work for the growth of Nigeria. 
As General Abu Bakr turned 79, President Buhari prays that, the, that Almighty God will increase his wisdom, strength, and give him longer life to keep serving the country. Congratulations, sir. Governor Bello Muhammad of Zamfara State says government is more than ever before determined to end the seemingly interminable security challenges bedeviling the state. The governor made the remarks in a statewide broadcast on the recent massacre of innocent people by armed bandits in Zurmi local government area of the state. Jamil Ibrahim has details. A recent armed bandits attack on Kada village and Zurumi local government area of Zamfara state where no fewer than 45 persons were confirmed dead while many others injured and displaced had thrown government and people of the state into a serious state of mourning. In a statewide broadcast, Zamfara state governor Abdullah Muhammad condemned the carnage in a strongest term, describing it as barbaric. With a heavy heart, I condemn our condolences on behalf of my family and the entire people of Zamfara state about this massacre. The governor who regretted that in recent weeks, the act of banditry has reverted to the ugly dimension inherited by the present administration and the state, says government is more than ever before determined to pay the criminals and their collaborators in the same coins. The recent suspension of some traditional rulers for allegedly remonstrating with the bandits in their domains, the governor says is a clear demonstration of the government commitment to ending the menace. In line with the recommendations of the former Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Abakar, led committee on finding solution to the spate of insecurity in the state. I assure you that we will remain steadfast in our effort to eradicate banditry and all types of criminality for understand. In this battle, no sacred cow whosoever is involved in this disturbing act, no matter how highly placed he is. He will be dealt with accordingly. As part of measures to complement the effort of security operatives, the governor says Zamfara State government plans to recruit locals who will be proactive in defending their communities against the escalating and bandit attack. This strategy is part of the decision taken by the northern state governors to combat the menace of banditry and related crimes in our region. Meanwhile, Zamfara State government has suspended all activities lined up to mark the second anniversary of Governor Bello Muhammad as government and people of the state continue to suffer the heartbreak of the Kadawa massacre. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. In response to the appeal made by the Yobe state government to international partners, more humanitarian support has come the way of persons displaced by the recent Boko Haram attack in Gaidam, a town bordering Niger Republic. The latest being the Yobe State Emergency Management Agency taking delivery and distributing relief packages to the victims in Gaidam, the epicenter of the attack. At the instance of the Jack Rich Aid Foundation, Yunusa Suleiman reports. It is at Gaidam Town, are said to be gradually recuperating from the recent attacks by the non state armed group that forced the inhabitants to flee to other parts of the state. Since the aftermath of the attacks, it was evident that federal and state governments, as well as other development partners, have done a lot in responding to the flights of the displaced persons taking refuge in some host communities across the state, with Jack Reach Aid Foundation becoming the latest aid organization that keys into the agenda of adding more value to the lives of Gaidam people to reclaim their means of livelihood. A 70-year-old physically challenged IDP, Bukar Kolo, and Fatima Ahmadu, a mother of five with special needs, were among the more than 300 heads of households from Gaidam benefiting from the gesture. Now, go to say. I am very grateful for the support given to me as it will assist me in taking care of my two wives and five children. Today we are in your best state to appreciate the good work of Mayor Malaboni and also to show concern with the victims of all the problems and challenges of insecurity we are facing in Nigeria. One key priority of Excellency Gonwe Malabuni is education of the returnees and education of the IDPs. So we want Jack Rich to key into this priority by giving us um, some opportunities, some slots to the returnees, the children of the poor, the poorest of the poor, opportunities to key into his scholarship program. Yobe State Government, through its emergency management agency, says 
those are always open for more donor agencies to lend their helping hands in reviving distressed IDPs in the state. In the Matru, Yunusa Suleiman, NTA News. Thank you, Yunusa. Like other humans, people living with albinism meet and exceed expectations in all the means of life in spite of the numerous challenges and setbacks they are often faced with. And as the international community marks the 2021 Albinism Day, Ifoma Aihoji highlights some experiences of these people and how they defy the odds. Albinos have a group of inherited disorders characterized by little or no melanin production, which exposes them to several health conditions. Nsikak here and her younger sister say they have been through a lot from childhood and have records and decades of experiences living with albinism. Going under the sun, the hot and scorching sun, I never knew that they were they were very dangerous effects of that that is now affecting my life. It's because of my side that math was not, my mathematics was never one of my uh, juicy subjects. Because I won't be seeing them solved on the board. Here, Medara and Amaka University undergraduates also share their individual experiences. As an albino, it's really hard. There are lots of um, social implications, medical implications. There are also discrimination. Often neglect albino, they feel they are not strong, they feel they can't speak, they feel they can't do things other blacks do. On a day like this, the international community seeks to highlight the needs of these unique people. The government should help educate us, employ us. They should proffer uh, laws that will really benefit the albinos. If government can be able to help in the aspect of giving out these creams, in the aspect of giving them glasses, it will go a long way for them. To address these concerns, the United Nations Albinism Awareness Campaign highlights the need to ensure equal access for persons with albinism to employment, education, justice, and the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health. In Uyo, Ifoma Aihoche, NTN News. Thank you, Foma. Our Enugu Center is our next port of call on Nationwide, where Chinenye is standing by with all the latest in that axis. Hello, Chinenye. Hello, Naja Atu. Welcome to Enugu. The Bishop, Diocese on the Niger Anglican Communion, Right Reverend Owen Wokolo, has commended the untiring efforts of the federal government in containing the current spate of terrorism and insurgency in many parts of the country. This came to the fore as the 31st Synod of the Diocese held at the St. John's Anglican Church, Ejizewele, Anambra State. Blessing Anyamu has details. Gathering of this nature gives the diocese opportunity to take stock of the year under review and prospect for more productive years ahead. The Anglican Bishop Diocese on the Niger Right Reverend Owen Wokolo while encouraging Christians to continually uphold the word of God beyond normalism and formalism, showing in words and deeds the true Christian virtue, condemn in its entirety the attack on formations and killings of security personnel across the country. He decried that the security situation in the country seems to be progressively worsening on a daily basis. He called on the federal government to implement the 20 20 police reform bill and the national confab report of 2014 to check the spate of insecurity and improve welfare of nigerians it is for the matter of this that the second year is calling for the immediate implementation of the 2020 nigerian police reform bill with the president signed into law in september last year it is the belief of the senate that if the said law is genuinely implemented, it will be great to some degree. Enable Nigerians experience well refined, well behaved police, which actions and words will be guided by the principles of accountability, transparency, and funding for the protection of the fundamental freedom of Nigerians. The Synod also applauded the federal government on her various measures towards revamping the economy in Onicha. Blessing, I am. NTA News. 
with the efforts of the judiciary of Enugu State in collaboration with the justice reform team and the state government in bringing forth the draft law and rules, the modern edition of Enugu State High Court Law Report 2021 has been unveiled. This was during a validation workshop for proposed magistrate's court law and rules of Enugu State 2020. Come for time, now reports. The value of law reports in law and the legal profession cannot be overemphasized. 17 years ago was the last time the magistrate court law and rules of Enugu State were reviewed. Given the tremendous rate of development in the various fields of law and other human endeavors, this becomes imperative that the law and the rules that guide proceedings in the courts are regularly reviewed. The regular review of the law and the rules will not only ensure speedy and effective justice delivery, but will also guarantee that the law and the rules are in line with global best practices. There are to guide both the lawyers who are practicing, both those who are in the university, for the magistrates, even for the judges. Governor of Enugu State, though represented, members of the bench and bar, stakeholders in the justice sector from the state and the body, including Enugu State Justice Reform Chairman, gathered to verify and authenticate the proposed magistrate court law and rules of Enugu State 2020, and to also unveil three volumes of the Enugu State High Court law report. His Excellency believes that his greatest legacy in Enugu State is the proposed magistrate court law deleted some provisions of the extant law and introduced other key items geared towards promoting speedy trial of cases and efficient justice delivery in the magistrate court. In Enugu, Comfort, I am NTN News. Forest resources have been described as veritable tools for economic growth and development of any, any nation. These were the views of some respondents in Enugu State. Chidi Okorafo has details. Forest resources are those goods and services of the forest either in its natural state or as a raw material which generates direct economic benefits or as a producer of indirect benefits. Hence, the measure put in place by the Enugu State Government to preserve and protect the forest. Our governor has graciously promised us that from our budgetary estimates that we submitted, that enough fund will be released for us to carry out afforestation and reforestation. But above all, that um, more staff will be employed to protect and preserve these forest reserves. Some of the people who spoke were of the view that forest, if well preserved and protected, will improve grazing reserves and bring about peace and development around Nigeria boundaries. Farming, big time farm, farming. I will encourage those who rear cattle to come to my area on agreement. Do you know why? If they can keep their cattle in a place for one year, I may not need to buy fertilizer the next farming season. When we talk of climate change, trees are essential in mitigating climate change. Wherever you have, you have trees, their roots hold firm to the soil and they control the erosion. It is a source of um, employment and revenue generation if you fail. The revenue is paid into government's IGR account, so it's also a source of revenue. Others harped on the need for the restoration of the natural forest cover that go far beyond the need to balance wood demand and supply. In Enugu, Chidi Okrafo, NTN News. And those are the stories from Enugu. Najaratu is back to you in Abuja. Thank you, Chineye. Now, good news for all aspiring farmers. The federal government is to revive all abandoned federal and state-owned farms across the country as part of measures aimed at boosting national food production and security. Musa Baba Aliu reports that this project 
will be achieved through the National Agricultural Land Development Agency, NALDA. National Agricultural Land Development Authority, NALDA, is a very important tool in our drive to achieve food security in Nigeria. Directive of the President to the management of the authority to is to create a program youth. that will enable youth actively participate in agricultural activities nationwide. This government will do everything to ensure that NALDA's mandate is translated to food security and sufficiency in the country. The authority has so far identified abandoned farm estates belonging to both federal and state governments in 21 states and are currently undergoing rehabilitation. The project has since started in Ogun, Anambra, Ekiti, a Boeing state, with land clearing ongoing while in Kasina and Borano state. The project is 80 and 30 percent completion respectively. The federal government is also to establish integrated farms in the 109 senatorial districts across the country. We'll have poultry pens, goat pens, rabbit pens, fish ponds, crop farming areas, processing and packaging plants, storage clinic, residential areas, schools, training centers, and as well as administrative blocks. The program, which will be under the National Young Farmer Scheme, is expected to engage more than 1,500 youths. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Such a heartwarming report. Governor Lalong inaugurates projects to mark Democracy Day celebration in Plateau State. Frama has details. Hello, Frama. Over to you. Najatu, glad to have you join us here. As part of activities marking the 2021 Democracy Day, Governor Lalong has inaugurated some projects executed by his administration across the state. The governor restated his administration's commitment to improving the lives of the people. Prisla Gumnan has the report. Projects inaugurated include water treatment plant in Pangshin, which was resuscitated by the present administration, the 7.5 kilometer Angle D Veterinary Institute Road, Angwandoki College of Health Zawan Road, as well as Rayfield Zarmaganda Road and Township Street Lights. Governor Lalong also inspected the Gold and Base Road linking the Dialogue Reconciliation and Peace Center and the Good Atiku Road Network in Rayfield. The governor visited farms for flower production and exotic fruits. This is one item that myself and the Secretary of the Government had to go to Kenya to go and watch what they do about flowers. This is what we want. We're not talking about government employment alone, but we're talking about empowerment. We will help you, so help you access uh, easy funds so that you can expand this place. We observed that in this country, many people still, despite the difficulty in foreign currency exchange, import flowers into Nigeria from East Africa and South Africa. We really, really got very pained that that was happening, so we decided to try out. He urged people of the state to sustain their support for government in its effort to provide more dividends of democracy for them. In Jos, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. The National Population Commission, Plateau State, says it has fully mobilized for the ongoing enumeration area demarcation towards a successful census in the country. Plateau State Director of National Population Commission, Pam Du Deme stated this in just at the commencement of the field work for the next population and housing census. Kela Gwichin has the report. Undoubtedly, accurate population data plays a very important role in planning towards achieving development in almost all areas of the economy. It is for this reason that the Commission says it has begun with this critical aspect, whereby selected enumeration areas in some local government areas in all the states of the Federation, including the FCT, will be captured. In Plateau State, two local government areas of Jos South and Mikang are being covered by the exercise, which commenced on the 6th of June. In making this commitment, 
The Commission is conscious of the important role of the pretest in the process of authenticating and updating the enumeration areas in preparation for the next census. This is the first pretest. Hopefully there will be another test, then the trial, then the main, just to make sure that we give Nigerians accurate data. Although no date has been fixed for the main census, the officials say the government is determined at ensuring that census is conducted soon and as stipulated by the United Nations guidelines. In George Caleb Gochin, NTN News. And that's it from Joss. We take a short break, after which the news continues with Najatu in Abuja. The much anticipated UEFA Euro 2021 is finally here. Can Portugal defend the title they won four years ago as they face world champions France, Europe giants, Germany, Spain, Italy, and England? Catch all the action via live transmission, in-depth studio analysis, fixtures, results, updates, and lots more on NTA, Africa's largest TV network. For sponsorship and advert placement, contact Bola on 080-37044-286 or Idris on 080-34633-644. This broadcast is proudly brought to you by NTA in partnership with Media Business Solutions, MBS Sports. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mamadou Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. <laughs> nice to know you're still watching. Significant strides in the fight against child labor in the last two decades are being threatened due to the impact of COVID-19, which has increased the number of children in one form of child labor or the other globally to 160 million, worsening the situation. The International Labor Organization, however, wants urgent action to mitigate the toll the pandemic is taking on children and their families, which is why the June 12, 2021 focus of the World Day Against Child Labor is Act Now and End Child Labor. Manuel Ayemiro reports. For the first time in two decades, the number of child labor has risen to 160 million globally, that is an increase of 8.4 million children in the last four years, with millions more at risk. 
due to the impact of COVID-19, according to a report by the International Labour Organization and UNICEF. The report points to a significant rise in the number of children aged 5 to 11 years in child labour, which now accounts for just over half of the total global figure. What we need, Fami, then is renewed cooperation and support for countries most affected by child labour, and that's what's called for by the relevant ILO conventions and also by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Let's remember, the world has already committed to eliminate child labour by 2025. According to the ILO Director General, Guy Ryder, the world cannot stand by why a new generation of children is put at risk. Therefore, inclusive social protection that allows families to keep their children in school, even in the face of economic hardship and increased investment in rural development and decent work in agriculture, are essential to break the cycle of poverty and child labor. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. Thank you, Emmanuel. Indeed, we look forward to a child labor-free future. And on that note, we conclude the news on Nationwide. Remember to stand with the NTA against rape and rapists. I'm Naja Atatajani. See you next time.